Hi guys, to make a long story short, I was away um, because I was in jail. Um, I got sentenced on July 20th. I don't want to go into the details of that now. Um, that'll be for another video. Um, I got out on August 27th. So yeah, on top of, um, it, it was just, I did file a habeas corpus for constructive custody. However, there were some things that I could have done better that I didn't do procedure wise. Um, then I filed at the county Supreme Court when I really should have filed with the district um, circuit court because uh, I'm in District 6 in New York. Um, and anyway, besides that, I'm not going to get into that now. What I'm going to do is get into the beast system and we all see it coming. And it is, let's see if I can get that in thing. I don't know if you can see that because my lighting's smart cards. Now, um, I've been seeing this um, all electronic stuff. It, it's been happening. It first started when um, your um, unemployment benefits and child support and your social security had to be either in a credit card form or a direct deposit, right? Because now they get everybody hooked on these cards. And I was upset and I was voiced, called and voiced my anger about this because I, I do my best to pay my bills in cash when I can because I'm trying to avoid the whole banking system, the, the squid, right? So, yeah. So, um, back in June, now, I get my, my child support payments, I get on, like, a credit card. And I went to log on to my account to check the balance. And I had seen that there were all these charges that I did not make. Now, luckily for me, I only had like nine or ten dollars in there because I just won't keep a lot of money in the bank. You know, I do. Uh, I put it elsewhere. So anyway, not that I have a lot. It's just I don't trust it, right? And and the advice always is to never keep more in there than you can afford to lose. So oh, okay. So um, I'm like, what the heck's going on here? You know, and these charges were out of like Brooklyn, New York. So I'm like, okay, you know, I've, I, I'm just like, okay, so I've lost all of $9, but I'm concerned here. And I'm like, oh my God, did I leave my card somewhere? So I go through my wallet and I realize, wait, my card's still in my possession. So did somebody like, you know, because when you go to pay for something and you're paying electronically, you hand them your card. They could very, I mean, you know, they carry these electronic scanners around and they could write down your number or they can, you know, look up your number in the system later. And all they have to do is flip back and right there's a security card. Because when you're online and you're making purchases or whatever, you don't swipe the card, you don't show ID, you don't do anything like that. Well, anyway, when I called to file a complaint and do all that, um, they were like, well, four other people called. So obviously it's not like, a, it's not coming from a vendor because there were people out in Ohio and Florida complaining about the same thing and all the purchases were made out of like a Target out of Brooklyn, New York. So I'm like, well, what's going on? Because they sold us this idea of getting our payments electronically and doing everything electronically because it was supposed to be safer to prevent identity fraud. And, and as it turns out, they have algorithms and web bots that just keep trying numbers until they get one right. And that's how they can hack your account. And I'm like kind of going, this is kind of pointless, right? So anyway. Anyway, I'm just like, well, you know, and I said sarcastically, well, you know, they just need to chip us on. He's like, yeah, they're, they're trying to, you know, move that. And they've already been telling us that that's, that's the direction that they're moving. And I'm like going, oh my God, people, what is wrong with you? This is, this is scary stuff. So from my credit union, okay, I got, I got this, right? And it basically is just the propaganda for safety and security, the driving forces, right? Because these smart cards are all, they're, they're, it's supposed to make it safer. It's supposed to protect your identity. And it is not, okay? So I got these about a week and a half ago. Yesterday, in the mail, from the insurance, from Blue Cross and Blue Shield, I get two letters. I am writing to inform you that Excellus Blue Cross Blue Shield was the target of a sophisticated cyber attack. Okay, now I'm going to know in here that this is a sophisticated cyber attack. So I'm going, okay, one. 
and that some of your personal information may have been accessed by the attackers. As part of our investigation, we noted we notified the FBI and are fully cooperating with its investigation to this attack. We take this issue seriously and regret the concern it may cause. I am writing to provide you information on the steps we are taking to protect your information moving forward. And then it says, what happened? On August 5th, 2015, we learned that cyber attackers had executed an attack to gain unauthorized, unauthorized access to our information technology systems. The initial attack occurred on December 23rd, 2013. Oh, the initial attack. So this means that it's more than one. So right off the bat here, they're being misleading. And I would argue fraudulent that this that it was just one cyber attack. But since it was an initial one in 2013 that they're just not telling us about until over two years later, close to two years later, it, it's just it, it's just fucked up. But OK, so their investigation determined that the attackers may have gained unauthorized access to information which could include your name, your address, your telephone number, date of birth, social security card, your identification number, financial account information, and all your claim information. Okay. So I'm like, what is the point of this? They've chipped our passports now. Um, I think New York State has been pushing to chip the driver's license, whether or not they have fuzz. They have done so or not. Um, I don't know because I renewed my license back in 2010 and I'm really like to the point now where um, I, I, I'm not going to play that game anyway anymore. I just haven't had the time to go research what I need to in the, in the commerce law to, to argue my defense for that. And then there's the whole issue of insurance because all the insurance companies say that you have to be licensed. And, you know, I, I just am like, well, you know, a motor vehicle is defined under commerce. I mean, even, and it's all done by definition and stuff, but I'm not going to get into that now, but you know, this is just, they're, they're creating these crises, crises. And we know this, and I'm really, really getting extremely irritated with this. So um, yeah, let me know what your experiences are and let me know what you guys think because I just, no, I mean, not that I mean. Um, I am an advocate for competing currencies. I know that, that um, you know, there's, a, there's, you know, certain things that I, I will utilize electronic payments for because I buy things on the internet and I like that convenience, but I'm seriously considering going with a cryptocurrency instead of this bullshit because it, it's just not working. It, it's not. And then they're going to be like, oh, well, let's just, you know, we'll just chip everybody. And it's like, then, then how do you argue that you're not the one making the purchase? And then before you know it, the computers will all come with scanners and they'll scan your forehead and they'll just be able to track everything and everything that you do. And these things are easily corruptible by these web bots and these algorithms. And, and how are you going to argue against a system like that? How you won't be able to because it'll just be a, a centralized power over the system. And it's like this, this whole Skynet ghost in the machine thing. I mean, we've already seen um, the, the stock market be affected by these algorithms and the fat finger. And it's like, come on. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Okay, that's it. That's my rant. Um, yeah. See you all soon. Bye.